Hello friends, myself Ruchi Patel working as an assistant professor at LJ College of Physiotherapy. Today I am going to discuss about joint structure and function. So let's start with the definition. So joint structure or the joint is the junction between the two or more bones or cartilage. So now we'll proceed for the classification. Joint is classified according to the functional, according to the structural level, and according to the regional level. So first we'll start with the functional level. To remember this functional classification, we'll use this mnemonic that is called as SAB. So S stands for synarthrosis, A for amphiarthrosis, D for diarthrosis. So first synarthrosis, it's a almost immovable type of joint, cranial sutures of the skull and uh, the cartilaginous joints in the growing children are the example of this type. Then next is the amphiarthrosis. It's a slightly movable type of joint. Cartilaginous pad is present between the articulating surfaces and this cartilage acts as a shock absorber. So the joints between the adjacent lamina of the vertebrae is this type of joint. Next is the diarthrodial type of joint. It is also called as synovial type of joint. And the, the joint range or the movement is the restricted by the shape of the articulating surfaces and by the ligaments which are the surrounded at the joint. So now we'll proceed for the structural classification. To remember the structural classification, we use mnemonic that is CSF. So C stands for cartilaginous type of joint, S for the synovial type of joint, F for the fibrous type of joint. So we'll see one by one in the detail. So fibrous type of joint, it is again divided into the sutures, syndesmosis and gomphosis. While cartilaginous type of joint is divided into primary cartilaginous type of joint and secondary cartilaginous type of joint. And the third is the synovial type of joint. So we have ball and socket type of synovial joint, then pivot type of synovial joint, plane joint, in joint, ellipsoid joint, condylar joint, and many more like saddle joint. So uh, we'll see one by one in the detail. Here are the images we have taken that is for the sutures, that is fibrous type of joint, then cartilaginous type of joint, and the third, that is the synovial type of joint. So next, we'll proceed for the fibrous type of joint. In that, first is the sutures. So articulating surfaces are connected by thin layer of connective tissues. Syndesmosis, that is the bones are connected by a considerably greater amount of connective tissues. And of course, it's a slightly movable type of joint. So the introscious radioulnar joint are the example of this type of joint. Next, that is the gomphosis. So it is also called as peg and socket type of joint. And articulation of teeth in the alveolar socket of the mandible and the maxilla by periodontal ligament. Now we'll proceed for the cartilaginous type of joint. So as we all know, we have primary cartilaginous type of joint and secondary cartilaginous type of joint. First, we'll see primary cartilaginous type of joint. The bones are united by the plate of hyaline cartilage. So the joint is immovable as well as it is strong. So uh, in certain joints, the cartilaginous plates are replaced by the bone. So costochondral joints are this type of joint. Second is the cartilaginous type of joint that is symphysis. So articulating surfaces are covered by a thin layer of hyaline cartilage and united by the disc of fibrocartilaginous. So this type of joint is almost permanent and through the throughout our life this type of joint will be present. So intervertebral joint 
it is this type of joint. Now, the synovial type of joint. In this figure, you all can see we have different type of synovial joints in the body. So it is almost mostly free, freely movable type of joint and it has a joint cavity that is filled with the synovial fluid. And it is also called as diathrodial type of joint. So if we say the joint is synovial type of joint, then of course this all the components should be there. That is the ligaments, then cartilage, cartilage then we require menisci or articulating disc, bursa, fibrous capsules, and of course, synovial membrane. So we'll see the synovial type of joint in the detail. We have plain, hinge, pivot, condylar, ellipsoid, saddle, and ball and socket joint. So first, that is the plain joint. Articulating surfaces are more or less nearly flat. Intercarpal and intertarsal joints are the example of plain joint. Next is the hinge joint. Of course, when we talk about hinge joint, immediately in our mind, the example of elbow joint will come, right? Okay, so articulating surfaces are fully shaped and the movements are permitted only in the one plane, correct? So elbow, ankle and interpharyngeal joints are this type of joint. Next will be the pivot type of joint. So rounded end of one bone fits into the concavity of another bone. And the rounded part, it is surrounded by the ligament. So of course, superior radial nerve joints are this type of joint. Then condylar type of joint. So name itself suggests the round articulating surfaces of one bone fits into the socket type articulating surfaces of the another bone and it permits two direction movement that is the knee joint so both the articulating surfaces have a rounded surface and which helps to provide the two plane motions ellipsoid type of joint that is the elliptical convex surface of the one bone articulates with the elliptical concave surface of the another bone. So it permits the two direction movement. Of course, wrist joint is the this type of joint and this type of joint has a circumduction movement as well. Next is the saddle type of joint. So articulating surfaces are reciprocally saddle shaped. That is concave and convex. So both the surface will have a concave and convex surface. So first carpometacarpal joint are the example of this type of joint. Now ball and socket type of joint. Same like hinge joint when we talk about ball and socket joint. In our mind the example of shoulder and hip joint will come. So the rounded convex surface of the one bone fits into the cup-like socket of the another bone and the movement which is permitted by this type of joint it is more or we can say it provides the three plane motions so shoulder joint hip joint are the example of this type of joint then according to the plane of movement we can classify it as uniaxial so we know that is only one plane motion will be present so Hinge type of joint and pivot type of joint is the example of uniaxial joint. Biaxial, two plane motions will be possible. So condylar joint, ellipsoid joint, saddle joints are the example of this type of joint. Whereas multiaxial joints means here the multiple joint, multiple plane movements will be possible. So ball and socket type of joints are multiaxial joints. Here the example of all the joints has been given and according to the number of articulating bones, simple bones like simple joint, like here two bones are articulating to form the joint. Compound joint means more than two joints or more than two articulating surfaces are there 
uh, or articulating bones are there which forms the joint whereas complex joint is the joint in which articulating surfaces are more complex and more articulating surfaces are present and next the regional classification of the joint that is called immovable type of joint vertebrae slightly movable type of joint and limb that is fully movable joint so this is what about uh, joints and its classification for the further detail you all can refer bill chorasia book as well as joint structure and function by cynthia nokin thank you